Hi everyone, welcome to the Community Classroom. This is Dr. Tracy McCarthy, psychologist, attorney, and educator, and we're going to look at some interesting dynamics today related to the Negro Islands around the world. And so many people might know about the Negros Island in the Philippine area. Uh, however, there are a number of Negro Islands in the Americas. And so we're going to look at the Negro Islands in the Northeast, the Southeast, Canada, and East Central. And what we want you to do is see if you can find more geographic information related to the Negro Islands, these place names, and if you can find any more information about any additional Negro Islands or any other geographic spaces with the Negro notation. And we're going to finish up with a notation regarding the necessity of maintaining historic landmarks and not losing history to iconoclasm. And so let's get started. Remember, if this appears anywhere other than the Dr. Tracy McCarthy channel, it is stolen and unauthorized. Let's get started. Now the word Negro can mean dark, black, gloomy, unlucky, bad, wicked. It can mean a number of things. One of the important things to note about the word Negro is that it is coming from the Spanish or the Portuguese. And up top you can see other variations of this idea of black or dark. And so when you see Negro, there should be the assumption that it is related to a Spanish or Portuguese naming process. Now, many people identify Negro as meaning someone who has dark skin, who is originally from Africa. Uh, this, however, has been applied to people throughout the world who have dark skin, uh, who have encountered the Spanish. And so let's look at some of these geographic spaces that are named by the Spanish, apparently uh, related to dark skinned people. And let's start off with the Philippine Islands and we see at the bottom central Negros Island. And here you can get a better picture of Negros Island and the other islands that are around it and the body of water that is surrounding the island. One interesting notation about the Negros Island region is that it is administratively abolished by the president uh, after only two years in existence. And so this is that region known as the Negros Island region. And here's a little information to get you started if you're going to be doing a little bit more research on this regarding the ending of that particular region. If you are interested in getting a little bit more information regarding Negros Island in terms of the culture and heritage, this is information from a blog page that might be helpful in terms of getting you started. Now this blogger identifies that Negro Island was originally understood as the place being cut off. And this is because the island was said to be part of a larger island, but it somehow got separated during a continental drift, similar to what's going on in Africa right now on the eastern side of Africa. And so it says that the original inhabitants of the island, they were Negritos in terms of their ethnicity. They were dark skinned, had thicker lips, and coilier hair. And so the name Negros was given to the island by the Spaniards who discovered the island. Uh, there's also an identification of the people there being the friendliest and most gentle people in the country. And of course, this should be familiar. It looks like carnival. Uh, and also the people there were uh, dubbed as affectionate. Now let's get started with the Negro Islands in the United States. And the first Negro Island we have is in the state of Louisiana. And here you can see the map with Negro Island located on it. And you can see what is surrounding it. And this is a satellite picture.
Now, many people might not be aware that there are a number of islands related to Louisiana. So you can see there are many of them. So you've got Cypress Island and Rabbit Island and Willow Island and Cane Island. So you can see there is uh, quite a diversity in terms of the islands in the Louisiana area. And this is just another look at where the island is located. Negro Island in Louisiana has a very interesting history and a very interesting folklore attached to it. it uh, this history goes back to the times of slavery and it was believed that the people were abandoned on this particular island because slavery had been outlawed and the captain of the ship that was transporting them did not want to get caught. It's also known as Skull Island. And here you can see the coordinates for it. And then here is this notation on this island in 1865, a slave boat captain dropped off his cargo of 200 slaves. The captain was unaware that the war was over and rather than being hanged for slave trading, he stranded the shackled slaves on the island to die before he headed off home. And next we have Negro Island, Florida. Now, if you do some research on the Negro Islands, one of the things you will find is that there is often a push, a more recent push, to change the name of the island. And here we see the Negro Island in Citrus County in Florida. And here you can see the location of Negro Island on the map. Florida not only has one Negro Island, it has two Negro Islands. And here you can see Negro Island is right next to Chicken Island in Tampa Bay. And so this is a pair of islands in the Tampa Bay area known as Negro Island and Chicken Island, and they are right next to each other. Now let's head up north to the Negro Island in Delaware. And apparently Negro Island is in the Milton, Delaware area. And going down near that Mason-Dixon line, we have the Negro Island in Maryland. And Negro Island in Maryland is along the Muddy Hole Road, and this is in Wicomico County, Maryland. One thing to make note of is that the name of Negro Island has changed from its original name in 1942 to its current name. And so it had a what would be considered a derogatory name in 1942 and it has been changed to a more politically correct island name in uh, 2011. Next, we have the Negro Island, Ohio. And Negro Island, Ohio is in Ottawa County. And moving up north, we have the Negro Island, Canada. And in Nova Scotia, we have Cape Negro Island. The Spanish and Portuguese sure were getting around. And here you get to see the Cape Negro Island Lighthouse. And next we have the Negro Island, Maine. And we have Negro Island, Maine. And here you can see surrounding harbor islands such as Stage, Wood, Ram, Beach, Basket, and Gooseberry. And of course, it would be close to Lake Winnipesaukee.
And here are archival records related to the lighthouse in the National Archives. One important thing to note is that they've changed Negro Island to Curtis Island. And here you can see more information related to the National Archives and Negro Island and the lighthouse. And here's a little caption of people out on Negro Island in 1890. Here you have a petition to the United States Congress related to the lighthouse. If you decide to do more research on Negro place names, you will find that there is a Negro River in Uruguay. There is a Negro River in Jamaica. There are also Negro Mountains. So you have Negro Mountain in Maryland, Negro Mountain in Pennsylvania, and Negro Mountain in West Virginia. One of the interesting things to note is that due to issues related to people claiming that they are offended by the word Negro, the word Negro has been removed from a number of things, including the census. And so now you also have this dynamic of geographic spaces, historic geographic spaces, uh, losing this identity because people are identifying this dynamic of calling something Negro as being offensive. And so one of the things that you also may want to think about is this dynamic of iconoclasm. And what is it that you think should happen in relation to these place names? When you destroy things in history because you feel offended or that in current times it's something that is considered offensive, the dynamic still is that there is a destruction of history. And so you have to be very careful in thinking about and engaging in things that destroy history. One of the reasons why it's so difficult for people to trace their history right now is because historical narratives have been changed around and things have been destroyed. Place names have been changed from one place to the other. People have been changed in terms of what they have been called, often because people have identified this as being offensive. So again, think about what is important in terms of identity. And also people need to be careful about what they ask for in terms of destroying history. And while Notre Dame is in Paris, Notre Dame holds a large portion of the history of the world. And so when you destroy any part of history anywhere in the world, you run the risk of destroying history everywhere. In terms of reparations, in terms of a truth commission, some of the information that you need for that truth commission is housed in Europe. And Paris is a major place where some of the information is housed. And this information is particularly important for people who are out of the Louisiana Territory area, Louisiana, Haiti, and other places. And so you need to, again, be careful and mindful and sensitive about this issue of preserving history around the world. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care and see you soon.